Board of Directors. And today I'm going to share with you a bead design that I did. Hi, um, I'm Kari Chittenden, the Education Director for the ISGB Board of Directors. And today... Hi, um, I'm Kari Chittenden, the Education Director for the ISGB Board of Directors. And today I'm going to share with you a bead design that I did for my first Beads of Courage Dream Beads assignment. And um, it's a little, it's a cube with a wolf face on it. And I'm going to show you how to do it, okay? I'm going to flip the camera around and we'll get started. Okay, so to start with, we're going to use black, a Fetri Black 064, um, a dark ivory stringer that's number 264, pea green stringer 212, sage green 211 that I think makes the best tan, and um, dark gray stringer 252, and intense black 066 and you'll need a marver of some sort some kind of pointy tool and I use the parallel mashers to make my cube shape so and then I got a um, an eighth inch mandrel or three sixteenths either one dipped in bead release okay so we're gonna start by making the cube and um, so we'll make a, um, a solid black cube or you could use some scrap glass and then encase it in black either way. Now, there's lots of different ways to go about this. My favorite method is to just make a donut and add glass to the donut to build it up and then mash it out into the wider cube. And then that way you ensure that the bead holes dimple in like, like they're supposed to. Nice smooth bead hole edges. So I'm glad adding glass to the outside of that disc shape that I built up just to keep um, adding to my gather. So I let the heat go out of the base a little bit and then just keep adding on the glass until it's about the shape that I want, or until it's about the... the um, size that I want. My bead is going to end up being about 5 eighths cube, a 5 eighths cube. Um, I think the one that I made for bead dreams was an inch or larger, but um, just for the sake of time, we're going to make our smaller half an inch or 5 eighths. See, I'm really piling up the glass here. That's starting to look like a, a lot. And that might be enough, actually. So now I'm going to heat it all the way through. I can start, you know what, I think I'm going to start with my marver, bring it down just a little bit, get the, get the, the thickness about where I want it. Now I'm going to use the masher just to keep my walls straight. Okay. 
so while I'm doing this, I, I could tell you a little bit about this um, Dream Beads program. I'm um, an on-call artist and I specialize in animal beads. Um, if you're familiar with my work at all, you'll know that I do a lot of animals and it's all because of my daughter. Um, when I first learned how to do beads, my daughter was 12 years old and all she wanted to do was make little glass animals and that's what I still love to make 20 years later um, but when I got the information about Beads of Courage and the request to be part of this Dream Bead on Call Artist team I um, just leaped at the opportunity um, combining kids and beads almost brings me right back home to the beginning for me where I started with as sharing this with my daughter um, and it's such a rewarding program I get um, thank you letters from the kids when they receive the bead and um, oh the initial letter is so interesting too where they describe what the bead of their dreams is I just enjoy it so much uh, it gives me back way more than I give in. It's just wonderful. Okay, so now our base bead is looking pretty fine. So I'm going to go ahead and mash it lightly. Uh, I'm really not putting very much pressure on it at all. And then I'm going to turn it uh, 180 degrees or 90 degrees, I mean, and mash it in the opposite direction. Um, and then look at it on end to see if it looks good to you. And this one is not there, so I'm going to heat it up a little bit more and do it again and get the shape that I want. It's really important to start with a good shape and then add to that and then work on maintaining the shape but if you start with a bad shape it's gonna you're gonna have a tough time putting it back to a good shape okay so this is looking pretty even to me the only problem is that the corners are kind of curved so we're gonna fix that I'm gonna heat up this black glass rod just slightly just so it's warm and then I'm going to spot heat the corner and just pick it out. I'm just going to drag it. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. Oops, sorry guys. Let's see, can I zoom in? A little bit better okay so I'm gonna spot heat the corner oh, oops I had an air bubble there it looks like so let's get get rid of that so we want to pick out that corner and when when your glass rod starts getting too hot you'll deposit glass instead of just move it so I cool mine a little bit I've got this marver on on my torch um, or you could just roll it on um, your graphite pad, marver pad, or anything to take the heat out of the glass rod. So you just want it warm to pull that glass, not real hot, to, um, if it's real hot, it'll just deposit glass. Okay, so I'm repeating myself, sorry. guarantee it won't be the last time. So now I'm just going to try to heat that up. I'm going to shape it a little bit with my paddles again. I'm going to shape it. I'm going to pinch it a little bit on the sides too. 
just to get it all nice and square. Okay. I think that looks that looks passable. That looks pretty good. Alright, what do you think? Should we go on? Okay. So now I'm just gonna deposit a little color on the cube and then I'm gonna pick out my design with a pointy tool and um, so all I want to do is get the color roughly where I want it it doesn't have to be perfect because I'm gonna move it around anyway so this is what we're going for um, so so I'm gonna deposit a little tan um, like kind of a u-shape for the ears and the top of the face and I'm just going to do that U-shape on all four sides. And it doesn't matter if it connects or, or not. You're just, you know, putting a little glass on there. You can connect it later if you want to. I want to a little bit. Okay, so now I'm going to put some gray uh, at the end of that connection. Just a blob, just a little dot. Okay, and then I want a little ivory at his muzzle. So I'm going to melt those in a little bit, actually, I think. I think, I think. Melt them in, and I could, um, as long as my tool is cool, I could use that flat edge of my tool as a marver. I'm, um, you know. <laughs> I have tools. I just use whatever's here. I'm so bad. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to put a little dot of ivory on each side for his muzzle. And I want him kind of even. So did you see what I did there? I just pulled a little off. Um, so now I'm going to put a little on put a little on and see if I have my dot hot I can take my warm rod and pick a little off to even up the sides so put a little on that looks pretty even right off the bat and that one is too fat still too fat Okay, so I just want a little bit. That looks pretty even. Maybe a little bit more on this side. Can you see that? Yeah, that's good. Okay, so now I need to melt it in flat. So I thought what I would do is pick out one and um, and then pause the camera and pick out the other four, or the other three, I mean, um, while it's on pause, just to keep the video short. It seems that my camera just doesn't hold a whole lot of time on the videos. So if you don't care, that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so now... We've got uh, little gray, almost look like bunny ears, and um, or tan ears, gray face, and then these ivory muzzle. So the first thing we're going to do is pinch out the ears. So I just want to make them into a point. So I'm kind of spot heating it. And then dragging my tool is cool. I'm just dragging my tool 
to pull out that ear into a pointy shape. Okay, so now I want to drag down his nose right between that muzzle and see how it pulls the muzzle down. Oops, I'm, I'm stuck. Okay, there I'm free. I was stuck for a minute. So if you do get stuck, just let it cool and your tool will release itself. Now I'm not dragging down very deep, okay? Keep that in mind. I am just lightly touching the surface, okay? You don't want to be real aggressive with this. You want to just have a real light touch. So now I'm just going to... Oh, I'm stuck again. I keep a, a cup of water handy so that I can cool off my tool. And when it gets too hot, it'll stick. Okay, so back to this. I'm just going to spot heat things and move move the glass. That's all there is to it. I'm just going to move the glass the way I want it. And I could I could move it all over the place. So see how I'm flicking the whole thing through the through the heat. I I, I want to do a little bit of insurance heat to make sure one side doesn't get too cold and then crack on me. Okay, so back to this. I'm going to drag this nose down a little bit. I want to drag the muzzle up a little bit. That looks good. So now I want to kind of give him whiskers. heat. So now, so I'm letting some of the heat go out because I don't want it to be too crazy. Okay, so now I want to just lightly grab that ivory and pick out some whiskers. Okay, so now, and you'll see those, those ears don't look perfect, but I think that, um, that it adds character. Ugh, I'm trying to zoom in for you. Okay, so I'm going to do that to all four sides. I'm going to do that to all four sides. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. I've got all four faces done, and they're all a little different. None of it's identical, and I'm um, melting everything back in flat, and checking the squareness of my bead. Oh, and I kind of forgot to say that when I do the whiskers, it's a little easier for me if the tool is hot to pull out those fine whiskers. Otherwise, I use a cool pointy tool. So, sorry about that. And did I tell you this was my first dream bead assignment? This um, this paper that I have here on my desk is actually the thank you note from Nicholas for the bead. Um, after every bead that that we send, we get a thank you note. Uh, I probably already said that. Anyway, it really is worth repeating. Okay, so now. We're going to add um, eyes and a nose, and it'll make these little guys kind of come to life. 
So I'm going to start with a dot of intense black. And I want to put a little dot right above the ivory on both sides for the eyeballs. Can you see that? I need to zoom in. Okay, let me try here. Oh gosh, too much, right? There. You can kind of see that. Do we have, oops. Okay. I'm adjusting here. Okay, so there you can see that. Okay, so two little eyeballs, and I want to do a little dot for the nose, too. Okay, so three little dots of black. So now we'll do it on each face. And I'm going to leave them raised while I check to make sure that they're in the right position and that they're all roughly the same size. Stringers getting too hot. That is too big of a blob. Okay, it's just way too hot. Can you see what I'm doing? Not really. Okay, so I'm just putting on dots, and I'm leaving them raised. Got it now. Okay. Okay, so now if I want to, I could let me try to move this camera a little bit. If I want to, I can try to straighten them up with a tool now, make sure that they're in the position that I want. See that? I can just move them a little bit. Okay. And now I'm going to put a little dot of um, pea green over the top of the eyeballs. And that will leave a rim of black around the eye and um, have like a green <laughs> eye color. And the pea green will react with the intense black to go ahead and form a pupil so we don't need to add a teeny tiny dot in the center which is sort of handy. So I want to deposit enough green to where you can see that they're green eyes but you know keep them keep them in the right um, the right size. They can't be so big that the, the wolf is all eyeball. So, how's that look? That looks pretty good. Okay, so now we're just going to melt those in and then we're almost done. I might um, pick out the eye to be more of an almond shape. Let's see how they look when they melt in. Uh, what's really fun is if you can kind of give them all different looking expressions. They'll, they'll end up having that anyway, just, just because each one is sort of different. Okay, so I'm going to take my mashers and just check the squareness there. And it kind of, it takes out 
most of the heat so you'd get a chance to look and see what you got. Oh, now see that guy. That guy is outstanding. This guy's kind of got one black eye and one green eye. Oh, this guy's got two black eyes. It looks like he's wearing shades. And that guy's got one black eye and one green eye. Let's see if we if we do another little deposit of green, will it come up? <laughs> oh, too much. And, and we kind of run the risk of having humongous eyeballs. So we'll see. We'll see how it does. And this one's got no green. Can you see what I'm doing? Or is my hand in the way? Okay, so now we're going to reheat it again. And l let's take a look at those um, pupils and see if that looks good enough. If it's not good enough, we'll just throw on a teeny tiny little speck of black for a pupil. Okay, so I think he looks awesome just the way he is. This guy, what do you think? I don't know about him. I think he needs a little tiny speck of black. Now if I make the pupil too big, it'll cover up that color. So we gotta keep them tiny. And this guy, this guy, you can't hardly see his pupil, so I'm gonna have to add it. This one we added, you can't see those either. Dang it. Alright, well it doesn't always turn out the way that you want it to. So you just have to kind of go with the flow. Modify as you have to. Oops. There. I put this eyeball in the wrong spot. But fortunately, it's not adhered very, very hard, so I can just pluck it off. That was lucky. Phew. Okay, so now we're melting in the eyeballs. And it seems like there was a couple of them that I couldn't really see the nose. So I'm going to go back in and add a bigger nose. I kind of like to be able to see the nose. Okay. Okay, so now if I wanted to, I could make the eyes more almond, kind of like I did with this one. So all you would do is take your pokey tool, spot heat the face a little bit, and take your pokey tool and just move those, just move those eyes a little bit, and just you're just moving the surface. You don't go deep at all. But sometimes you have to pick a couple of times. Okay, so do you see how that one, that one's eyes got? Uh, point it a little bit. Okay. So now I'm going to melt it all flat and see if there's any other eyes I want to 
modify a little bit or any other little tweaks I want to do. I'm going to just get it square again. Oh, look how cute that one is! That one's pretty good. But you can tell I got chill marks I'm going to have to get rid of. this face. What is with that white speck right under his eye? I don't think I like that. See it right there? Uh, let me try to smear it out. And I think for this one I've got to use my Just dragging it down ended up making those eyes look pointy too. That's kind of cool. Let's do that on purpose on another one just for fun. Okay, how about this one? Okay, so we're spot heating it. And then we're just gonna, oops, drag it down like right in the middle. did it or not. But it looks cute, so we're going to leave that one. Oh, look at this guy's. He's got big eyes. Big eyes. Okay, let's try to let's try to make those pointy. So we're just going to drag right in the middle. Oh yeah, that worked. And I'll try to bring them out this way a little bit. Come on, release. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. Okay, so, once again, we'll get it all flattened out, recube, recubify. I think that's the technical term for it. Recubify. Oops. Dang it. See, I'm looking on end to make sure it's cubed, and it's not really. I'm going to have to fix that. Okay, I'm going to use the marver because the parallel masher is starting to have fits with me. So lots of way ways to make this happen. The, the marver works just as good, if not better. Um, I try to do just one side at a time just to keep control. Okay, and now if I felt like I needed to, I could pick out the corners again, but I'm thinking that they're okay. Okay, so what do you think? Little wacky little faces, right? That one almost looks like a Boston Terrier, maybe. See, you could make all kinds of different animal faces and different expressions just for the fun of it. Okay, I'm going to call it good and go ahead and put it in the kiln. And I'll show you a picture of the finished one when it's done. All right? Thanks. Bye. Here's a finished feed. All those little funny faces. <laughs>